Hey, Tubies. It's Psychic Bob. Well, it is so good to be back with you. I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who came out to yesterday's video. I did a video about my uh, my trip to Washington, D.C., and I had a lot of fun. And I know some of you are going to say, well, Psychic Bob, where are our horoscopes? Well, let me tell you what's been going on. Psychic Bob's had some drama in his home the last few days. Um, we had uh, yesterday our water and our electric were shut off for the whole day. So that's why I ended up going to D.C. because I couldn't film videos um, and I couldn't stay in the house. I had no air, no fan, nothing. Uh, so it's really crazy. So that's why I ended up not being able to do horoscopes. Well, that was supposed to be fixed, and I got home from D.C. last night. By the way, some of you wrote and said, gosh, it looks like you were awful hot in the video. It was sweltering. Any of you ever been, ever been to D.C. in the summer? It is definitely, I think, one of the hottest cities on the East Coast of the United States. It's just, it's a swamp. It used to be a swamp plant. So it's very kind of subtropical in the summer. And uh, it was hot. Well, you can imagine my, my uh, you know, drama. When I got home, by the way, I started to get a little heat sick. And, you know, if you'll see in that video, towards the end, I look a little tired and a little flushed. I really was feeling a little heat sick. Even though I was drinking water, I just think it was, it was just too hot. And I hadn't gotten used to the heat yet. Over in D.C., you know, that's all open. There's no real shelter from the heat unless you're inside a museum. Uh, but I had to go up and down the mall to get to the museum, so I was really out baking under the sun a lot. Anyways, you can imagine how fun last night was when I got home, uh, and, you know, I uploaded the video, and I thought, God, you know, I'm so hot, I'm going to go take a shower, only to find out that our water was shut off again. <laughs> water was fixed, supposedly, yesterday, and then it got shut off again in the evening. So I was not able to take a shower, which is horrific after you've been out baking all day in, a, you know, near 100 degree weather. Well, the heat got to me and I was just not feeling good. And so anyways, I ended up going to bed, got up this morning, got notification that they were going to turn off the heat and or turn off the electric and the water. So I had no day. I've had no water, no heat. I was able to get a shower just briefly before they turned it off. Then I've been out of the house all day. So it's been a little hectic and Psyche Bob's a little behind schedule. I want to say thank you to all of you who've been patient. I, um, I had to cancel a number of readings today uh, because, um, you know, the electric problem, the water problem, I just wasn't able to, uh, you know, get ready to do anything. I ran out of power. I, I was not able to work today, basically. So, don't worry, we'll get you all back on the schedule, okay? Psychic Bob didn't forget you. I thank you for your understanding and your patience. Anyways, well, here we are. It's Tuesday. And by the way, for those of you who do want to get on my schedule, if you send me an email to readings at robert-hickman.com, I'll get that and then we'll get you on the schedule, okay? All right, so we're going to do messages from the spirit world. I want to say thank you to all of you who have been watching and writing. By the way, Messages from the Spirit World is free. There is no charge for this. Uh, so if you want to be on Messages, put your question in the comment box below this video. Or if you don't want to do that, you can write to me at readings at robert .com, Okay, we'll get to it later. All right, well, we're going to get into the letters. But before we do that, let's all just take a moment and attune to the Spirit World. Okay, I hear my spirit guide Fletcher back here. He says hello. All right, our first letter today is from Stargate One. Oh, that's a good name. Stargate Red says, uh, great videos, Bob. Uh, can you make a video on why some of us see the same numbers over and over, like 111, 222, 333, 444, 555? Um, is this something from the higher self or is it all just meaningless? Hi, Stargate. That's a really, really good question. Um, I think that is going to require it, definitely a full video. There's a lot to that question. It's a very intense question. But um, just to give you a little insight today, um, I believe, and it's my experience, that when you see a repeating number, 
it is a message from the spirit world many times. Um, the spirit world likes to manipulate objects, people, places, things to get our attention. So when they put a repeating number in front of you over and over, you keep seeing 555. You know, you look at the clock, it's 555. You go somewhere and you look up, it's 555. And it's like it just keeps happening over and over. I do believe there's a message in that. Um, so when you say, is this something coming from the higher self? I, I think it's from both. It's from the spirit world. The spirit guides draw us to that. And our higher self also recognizes that number as an important symbol. Now, unlike a lot of mediums, I don't necessarily believe that the numbers are always a universal message. So it's not like 555 always means, you know, good luck or bad luck or however you interpret. I believe it's unique to the person. And so when you see that number, it's also a sign to know yourself. And as you know yourself, you will understand the message. So definitely working with the higher self is important. And I think if you spend time in a reflective meditation, when the numbers come, they will also kind of, in a sense, whisper to you their meanings, you see. So, um, no, I do think there is a meaning. Uh, I do think it's connected to the higher self. So it is not meaningless. It's not just random. Um, you know, it's interesting. The more scientists study the universe, they're discovering more and more that there are patterns and an order to the cosmos, even on the molecular level. And so the repeating numbers, I think, are kind of part of that cosmic reality. So yes, there is a connection. Um, anyways, I'm going to do another video soon on that. So definitely keep watching. We'll go into more details about the numbers mean because it's very complex. But to answer your question in a nutshell, uh, yes, it has a meaning. And uh, you can learn what that meaning is. And we'll, we'll have a video on that. Uh, I think that we'll do that. Probably won't be till next week, but uh, definitely check back here, okay? Thanks for writing. <laughs> All right, our next letter is from the Nothingness Chronicles. That is such a unique thing. Um, they were, they say, Bob, I want to know if my spirit guides have any messages for me, okay? And um, what would be a good time for me to start something new? Good questions. Well, you know, I have to tell you, um, I keep picking up around you. It's interesting, you got a lot of purple light around you, which tells me that you are getting a lot of presence, spirit presences around you. And I keep getting the name Theodore or Ted around you. And it's interesting, when I see him in profile, he looks like he's in a military, like a World War II uniform. Uh, but I keep hearing Ted saying, he said, I'm pushing them to be braver. I'm pushing them to be braver. So um, you're at a crossroads energetically right now where you're starting to claim your power. And I really see for you as we get into around August of this year, a real sense of freedom. I feel this is a time of crossroads for you. And Ted seems to be saying like you're, you're breaking into a new path. I feel this is a time that may have a career elements like training for a career or launching into a new career area. And I feel like in your area, you know, particularly you have a lot of creative energy, particularly in the writing area. So I want you to ask your spirit guide, whose name is Ted, to help you with some writing. I feel like you may be in a position this summer where it's almost like you write um, something that gets published, or it might be like working with a company where you write press releases, but you're doing something in the communications area. Uh, in terms of starting something new, I feel like August is really your power month this year. That's where everything starts to open, and I think that continues into the fall. Okay. Hope that helps a little bit. Thanks for writing. <laughs> All right. Um, our next letter is from Anna Magana. Hello, Anna. Anna Magana writes and says, um, Dear Bob, I just found out that my mother is having an affair. Will that relationship last? I am so hurt by this. I never saw it coming. Um, I don't want to be around her. I'm so full of anger. Please help me. Oh, and I'm so sorry. Um, 
you know, first of all, it's very upsetting when we see a parent act out in a form of betrayal. A betrayal against your father, a betrayal against your family, a betrayal against honor. So this is difficult. Um, in terms of that relationship lasting, I don't see it lasting. Um, what they show me is interesting around your mother. Your mother is very lonely for some reason. Um, and I'm not saying this to put blame on anybody or judge anybody, but I feel that for some reason she feels that she's disconnected from her own self and from the family. I'm not saying you caused it, but her own perception of herself is actually rather low. And I feel like this affair started because this person that she's involved with gave her recognition or gave her praise. Um, I can understand when you say you don't want to be around her. Um, and it's probably best you keep your distance now because when you have that much anger, you could say things that would be very devastating. And even though you might feel entitled, you have to remember she's a person on her journey and she's going to do her own thing and we can't always help make people do what we want them to do now you and I know that that affair is not a good situation I'll be honest with you I do feel that the person that she's involved with actually has true feelings for her I don't think it's just a, a con man or a game or somebody just playing around with her emotions I do feel the person has sincere intent um, however, this person has crossed a line, a boundary, by going after a married woman. So their intent, no matter what it is, in my opinion, is simply wrong. Um, you know how I want to help you? I want you to, first of all, understand that you don't have to deal with this all on your own, okay? You have a lot of spirit people that are going to help you. I want you to call upon Archangel Michael to be a guardian for you and for your mother. Archangel Michael carries a sword, and his sword brings truth and wisdom to people. And so if you invoke him and say, put your sword in front of my mother that she will awaken, you're bringing in higher power. See, when we see somebody going into such error as your mother is, um, we don't have to fix that, but we can call on higher power to fix it. Uh, so the best thing you can do right now is bite your tongue and invoke a higher power. Let them bring her awareness to herself. As I said, your mother does feel isolated for some reason. I feel, and that's not about you, it's just something she feels inside of herself. And I don't think you can fix that. But I do know that Archangel Michael can help her realize that she's crossed over a line she shouldn't cross. You know, you know, when it comes to adultery, I'm very old fashioned and very, um, I'm very intolerant of that. I don't, I feel that you're either going to be married or don't be married, but I don't tolerate this affair stuff. I, I think it hurts too many people. I don't think it's of the spirit. Um, you know, if she wants to leave and be single, then she needs to make that choice. But at this point, carrying on an affair isn't helping her. So that's my, my view on it. And I want you also to get a red candle and you light that. And I want you every day to take your anger and dump it into the candle and say, St. Michael, take this. Help me burn it up in the red of this candle and let me be free from judgment. Let me be free from anger. And St. Michael will help you, okay? Hope that helps out. You got my prayers always. Okay. Thanks for writing. Blessings to you. All right. Our next letter is from Arizona Outdoor Survival. That's a good name. Well, y'all have such creative channel names. I love that. And they were said, Brother Bob, um, what colors do you see around me in my aura? Um, and what do you see me doing? Hi, Arizona. Um, you know, around you, you've got a lot of beautiful colors. You've got some orange, you've got a lot of blue, and some some gold light here. Um, you have a communicator theme, uh, and you also have a, an artist theme on your chart. Um, 
I keep seeing a media connection around you. I feel that you want to take your hobby. I know you like to go out into the, the wilderness, but I feel that you have a lot of knowledge about wilderness stuff that would actually be helpful to people. And I think you want to parlay that into some media work, uh, put together a TV show, try to get it picked up. I really feel like uh, if you started that this summer, um, in early 2018, you'd be able to get some production support. You have gold light around you, which tells me that there are people in positions of power that will be interested in what you're doing, like studio executives or people like that. So I want to encourage you, develop a program about what you know and about what you love and run with that. Orange light, always about performing, creativity. Blue light, always communicator. Very good combination. And of course, you've got a lot of media power also. So that's where I see you going. And um, that's, you know, that's really where it's going to take you. So honor your life themes, uh, communicator and artist, particularly performance artist. OK, so that's like performing, speaking, teaching, being in front of camera. That's where your power is. Hope that helps. Thanks for writing. Blessings to you. I can't wait to see your show. All right. Our next letter is from Donovan Greenfield. Hello, Donovan. Donovan writes and says, uh, Hi, Bob. I'm being attacked by evil people. What do I do? You know, Donovan, let me tell you, one of the things that I pick up around you when I step into your frequency is I'm getting a lot of uh, purple light around you. Purple light is the color of psychics. It means that you have an ability that is um, mediumship based. I also get green light here around you, which tells me that you're getting spiritual and physical healing as well. And um, in terms of evil people, what I am picking up, and I have to be honest, I do feel that you are drawing to yourself some earthbound souls. Um, they may seem demonic. I'm not actually getting demonic entities around you, but I do get low level earthbounds. And the difference of these are that the earthbounds are actually humans. They're messed up people. And as we know, people can be awful, evil, and demented. So, you know, there's a saying in the spiritualist movement, as above, so below. And so you're not crazy. You are picking up spirit entities. Uh, what I want you to do is literally get a bowl of salt and put that in every room of your house. Salt has a way of stepping down vibration, particularly make sure it's in your bedroom because... Uh, you need to lower the frequency. At night when you sleep, your energy field's expanding. It's literally like a luminous sign, like a neon sign in the spirit world. And that's drawing them to you. So if you lower that vibration through using salt, you're going to get a better sleep at night. Because I am picking up imbalance here around you in the sleep area. Um, I keep feeling like they're whispering to you or making kind of vague, in, vague threats or kind of just saying stuff and staring at you. You must not be intimidated by these people. Um, spirit, the earthbound spirits can create havoc. I'm not going to lie. They can make, you know, like throw objects across the room. But it takes so much energy for them to manifest that really, um, you know, don't, don't give them power. Don't talk to them. Don't engage with them except to say, you have to leave out of my house. Put salt around your room. You might even get a few bowls of salt and put it around the bed at night. Um, this will go a long way into helping you. And I also want you to stop and to pray. You know, when we call in divine power, however you call the divine, God, Father, Mother, Great Spirit, whatever you call the divine, call that power and ask it to be with you. Because prayer really does bring light to our spirit and it protects us. So... I want you to start with that, and uh, let's see how that goes, okay? We'll be in touch. Thank you for writing. Blessings to you. All right, our next letter is from Mysterious1111. And Mysterious writes this. Is, Hi, Bob. Uh, my name is Misty. Hi, Misty. Thanks for being here. Misty writes says, uh, On May 2nd, uh, my 23-year-old cousin... Uh, was hit by a truck on his motorcycle. Oh. Uh, he was in a coma for days 
but he passed away. I'm so sorry, darling. Saturday was his memorial. Um, was he there? And does he have any messages for his mom, fiance, or family? Hi, Mysterious. First of all, hon, let me, let me just give you a big hug from Spirit. I am so very sad to hear this. You know, when we see a young person like that die, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? Um, you and I look at it and we said, this is not fair, it's not right. Um, you know, one of the things I can tell you, you know, when we come down to the earth, um, and this may not bring you a lot of comfort today, but down the road it may make sense to you. They warn us. See, we have a whole council and they tell us, they say, you're going into earth. You know, you you could you know you could have some dangers. You may not make it, and uh, you know many of us we have close calls with death and we scrape out. That's because the spirit world, you know, warns us. You know, you might be in a dangerous situation. Um, they try to help prevent that, but you know we're really we're on our own a lot. They let us have free will, and if if we're not actively every day saying, "All right, spirit people, guard and protect me." They kind of have like the prime directive. They have to stand back. So I do, you know, honestly feel this was a freak accident. I, uh, you know, some people say, oh, God wanted him to go home or it was his time to go home. There are cases when it is like that. But I have to be honest, I think this was just a, um, a random accident. It's tragic. Uh, because, you know, when I step into his vibration, one of the things I feel is that he wasn't really ready to go. I don't think he wanted to leave his fiance or his family. Um, so I think this is one of those things where, you know, sometimes what happens is the body gets so damaged that we can't repair it. And this is what happened with him. Um, I can tell you one of the things that I keep picking up around this is that um, literally the day he died, he was like somebody in the family, it might have been his mom, I keep feeling. I feel like his mom was feeling off all day. Like, you might want to ask her. It's almost like she just got up and something just didn't seem right. Maybe she was overtired that day. But I feel like on a soul level, she could feel this coming. And I feel like his fiance was having a very strange day as well. And I feel like it was almost like the spear world, the angels were around them, kind of sheltering them already because they knew that this shock was coming. And see, the spirit people do that. Um, in terms of him being at his funeral, yes, he was there. They showed me that he was there, and there was somebody, I don't know if this was right at the funeral or right after, but somebody was doing a toast to him, like they popped a drink or a bottle of wine or something. There was an alcohol or somebody had a toast for him. And they keep saying he loved it. He loved that people had a toast for him. I don't know if that makes sense to you. You might want to ask about that. That may have been a little later. But I feel like around the time of his memorial, that day or the day after, there was somebody having a toast and there was alcohol there. And it was like, he was like, oh, yay, all right. Uh, he is free of the body. Um, he has crossed over to the light. They show me that he's not earthbound. So that's a good thing. Um, and he has been visiting. Um He's been mostly right now around his fiance, who seems to be literally paralyzed. And um, they're helping her. And I want you to pray for her. And I know you're suffering as well. But see, you're the strong one of the family. And sometimes some of us have to be the strong one. And so your goal right now is to, I want you to let all of them know, his family, his fiance, his mom, that I can tell you he did cross to the light and he's at peace. And he has been visiting because he's trying to help everybody let let them know he's all right. Um, I'm not feeling like they're getting a lot of signs from him right now. So tell them don't worry. As his energy gets stronger, he will manifest. And I feel it's going to be a few weeks yet. But uh, as we get a little later in the summer into July, I feel like there's going to be a, a clear understanding of his presence that he has survived. Um, I want them to watch their dreams. I do feel he's trying to come at night to communicate with them. So he's in the light. He's not in any pain here. Um, they show me that actually when he was in the coma, um, he had a choice. They told him if he stayed in the body, he would have had brain damage. He would have been kind of a vegetable, honestly. Um, and he didn't want to put his family through that. 
So he chose to leave the body uh, to be free of the pain, but to also be free of the burden. It was actually a sacrifice. He sacrificed himself so that others wouldn't have long-term suffering. Um, this way, you know, in the spirit world, they show us all the options. And the family, he felt, would heal quicker if he would just go on rather than try to linger on in the body. Okay. I'm so sorry for your loss, and I'm, I'm sending prayers, honestly, to all of you. And um, But let his fiance know that he is alive, um, that he has tried to visit her. Literally, the day of his death, he literally was around everybody. But it's like, I felt like everybody just wasn't feeling it. Um, but they will get a sign very soon. And I keep feeling like he's manipulating I keep hearing radio. It's like every time that somebody's in the car, I think it's fiance, maybe it's you, but I'm hearing the dial change. It's like they put the radio on. They're like, well, we're not even touching. Something's going on. That's him in the car. He's trying to let you guys know he's fine. Okay. Um, but he wants everybody to know he's in the light. They keep telling me the Fletcher said, he said he's at peace and he wants everybody to know he's at peace. That's his main concern. Okay. Hope that helps. Blessings to you. Thanks for writing. Oh my gosh, guys. So I tell you, I look at the time. I don't know where the day goes. Listen, that's all I've uh, time I've got today for messages. But I am so thankful you're here. Listen, put your questions in the box below or write to me at readings at robert-hickman.com. We'll get you on for next week. But I'm so glad you're here. Listen, by the way, if you get a chance... Stop over to my website and pick up some summer reading. We got wonderful books over there at robert hickmancom Once you enter the website, you'll see a tab up at the top that says bookstore. You can pick up some books. You guys are the best. I love you. Mm, thanks for being here. Thanks for your patience as I deal with all my electrical and water problems. <laughs> hey, it's life in the big city. You guys are best. Thanks for being here. We'll see you here tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Wednesday. Wicked Wednesday. We'll have something mystical. Be back here for that. We'll see you then. Until then, may you always blessed be.